right, we are back at AP Review. This is 2018 BC free response number six. Uh, cool. So we're started off with the Maclaurin series for the natural log of the quantity one plus x, which is one that you can have memorized, but they did you a solid here and did not make you memorize it. So cool. Thanks, AP. Uh, so here's the series, right? Uh, and then they give us that f of x is defined as x times the quantity natural log of one plus an x over three. So part A asks us to write the first four non-zero terms and the general term of the Maclaurin series for f. Okay, so basically, here's what's happening. The series they gave me, right, I'm going to replace all the x's in the series they gave me with an x over 3, and I'm going to times the entire series by x, right? So what's happening here, right, in part A, is that essentially my f of x should be an x times each one of these things, right, which would raise the power, well, so... Sorry, don't want to raise the power first. So it's an x times, and then I'm going to replace this x with an x over 3, right? Minus an x over 3 quantity squared over 2, plus an x over 3 quantity cubed over 3, uh, minus an x over 3 quantity to the fourth over 4, uh, plus dot, 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 right? Uh, negative 1 to the n plus 1. Uh, x uh, over 3 all to the n divided by n plus da 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 da. Okay, then I'm going to distribute the x, right? So my f of x is going to be, uh, and it's up to you. Honestly, I would probably leave, I don't know, you can, like, you don't have to leave the x separately. Um, what you'll notice is that the 3 is actually going to be the n power. So I'm going to end up with an x squared, right, over a 3, just a 3 to the first, minus, this will be an x squared, but on the bottom I'll end up with that 3 squared times a 2, right? Plus, this will be an x, uh, sorry, this wasn't an x squared, it's an x cubed, my bad, because it's squared there and cube it, right? This is an x cubed times that other x, so it's an x to the fourth. I'm going to get an x, uh, a 3 to the third times a 3, and I'm going to leave it as 3 to the third times a 3, even though I know it might be tempting to make it uh, a 3 to the fourth, because it fits the pattern better to leave it as is. This would be an x to the fourth, but I'm timesing by an x, so this will be an x to the fifth, on top of a 3 to the fourth times 4, plus da 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 I end up with this negative 1 to the n plus 1. I have x to a power higher than n, like 1 higher than n, so x to the n plus 1, over a 3 to the n and a regular n, right? And then dot, dot, dot. So that's my series, right? Part B, determine the interval of convergence for this Maclaurin series that you just wrote. Show the work that leads to your answer. Notice they said the interval of convergence. So remember that when we say interval, so this is the thing I'm going to need for that, right? When they say interval of convergence, we're talking ratio test, once you find the endpoints, you check the endpoints. That's it, okay? So I'm going to give myself a little bit of room up here. And in that room, I'm going to write what the nth term is of this a sub, or of this f of x series, right? So, so the nth term, right? So a sub n of this thing is a negative 1 to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, over a 3 to the n and an n, right? And the reason I'm writing that up there is because I'm going to need a lot of room for this ratio test, and I don't want to mess up that formula, right? So part B, I want to set up the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1, which means anywhere you see an n, you make it an n plus 1. So that would be at negative 1 to the n plus 2, because it's n plus 1 plus 1, x to the n plus 2, because it's n plus 1 plus 1, over a 3 to the n plus 1 times an n plus 1, right, all over this term just copied as it is, my a sub nth term. Now the negative one is really never, ever, ever going to matter because what's going to happen every single time is that I'm going to end up with uh, them canceling to just give me a negative one on the inside, but it, since it's an absolute value, I don't care. When I flip this stuff to make it uh, more manageable, and we'll inch this over so I have a little bit of room, so it's still the limit as n approaches infinity of. So everybody's going to have a buddy. So all these guys stay on the same floor they're on. So the negative 1 to the n plus 2 stays on the same floor. The x to the n plus 2 stays on the same floor. And these guys stay on the bottom because they're on the bottom of that, that first fraction, right? But then everybody from this fraction ends up on the opposite floor and ends up matching a buddy that is the same kind of term. So I'm going to have this negative 1 to the n plus 1 right under the negative 1 to the n plus 2. I'm going to have an x to the n plus 1 right under the uh, x to the n plus 2. I'll have a 3 to the n right on top of the 3 to the n plus 1. And I'll have an n right on top of the n plus 1, right? So what's going to happen is these guys are going to cancel and net a negative 1 that I don't care about. Uh, these guys are going to cancel and net an x. These guys are going to cancel and put a 3 on the bottom, right? Because the power on the bottom is bigger. 
So what's going to happen is I'm going to get the limit as n approaches infinity of the only thing left that still has an n is this stuff times, uh, I don't care about the negative, so we can just call it an x over 3, and that's less than 1. Well, as these guys go to infinity, right, as n goes to infinity, uh, these are both the same degree, they're n to the first, so they're going to go to a 1. So I end up getting that x over 3 in an absolute value is less than 1, which means if I wanted the radius of conversion when I multiply the 3 over, the radius of convergence is a 3. Uh, it's 3, and it's 3 units from 0, so it goes as far to the right as 3, and as far to the left as negative 3. But I don't want the radius of convergence, I want the interval of convergence. So, now I go back up here. Oh, I shouldn't have erased my nth term, but that's okay. I didn't mean to erase that. Well, so now, I know that the window I'm looking at starts at 0 and goes up as high as 3 and down as low as negative 3. The question mark are those two endpoints. So in order to check the endpoints, I need to specifically check what happens if x equals negative 3. Right? And I need to specifically check what happens if x equals 3. Sorry, I didn't move over far enough. Cool. So I'm going to check these in my a sub nth term, which I'm going to write it down again because I keep forgetting uh, that I shouldn't have erased it. So it's a negative 1 to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n and an n. Right? It's the nice thing about doing things on paper, not a whiteboard. You don't accidentally erase things. So when I plug in negative 3, I have this negative 1 to the n plus 1. I get a negative 3 to the n plus 1, all over a 3 to the n times an n. Well, because these are both to the same power, I can put them inside uh, and make them both to the n plus 1. So I would end up getting a 3 to the n plus 1 on top of a 3 to the n times an n. Well, that nets to a 3 over n. This is essentially the harmonic series with a 3 in front, right? This is a 3 in front of the harmonic series. The harmonic series is one of those big ones that we want to memorize. It diverges, right? The harmonic series diverges. If you multiply something divergent by 3, it still diverges. Because if something is infinitely large and you times it by 3, it's still infinitely large. So that means that negative 3 will not be included. Now what usually happens on these problems is it, that frequently when you end up with a with the harmonic series uh, at the end when you test an endpoint, it's really common that the other endpoint will give you the alternating harmonic series which converges. So you end up with one endpoint that is not included and one endpoint that is. Now let's see if that's what happens here, right? So when I plug in three, I get negative one to the n plus one. I get a three to the n plus one. Well now uh, I could combine them if I want, but there's not really a huge incentive because what I notice is these are already the same base. Right? And another way to do this, if you had wanted, would have been to factor out the negative 1. Uh, so instead of doing the way I did up here, you could have made this a negative 1 to the n plus 1 times a 3 to the n plus 1, and then you would have figured out that these guys together are a negative 1 to an even power, which would have net a positive 1, and you would have been able to cancel the same way I did. So there's a couple different ways to do that. So I noticed that this ends up being the alternating version of the same series I just had. Right? Uh, so the 3 to the n plus 1 will net a 3 on the top, over this n. So what I notice is this is a 3 times the alternating harmonic series, right? So the alternating harmonic series converges. So, so if you times a 3 by something convergent, it's still convergent. So uh, we have a situation where the interval of convergence for part b, after all of that work, right? For my part b, my answer is that the interval of convergence did not include negative 3, but it does include 3. Uh, or you can write it the way I prefer, which is, I like parenthetical notation, it's kind of my jam. Uh, so, you know, up to you. But your interval of convergence should not include negative 3, but it should include 3. All right, part C. Let P of 4 be the fourth degree Taylor polynomial about x equals 0. Use the alternating series bound to find the upper bound of P sub 4 of 2 minus f of 2 uh, in absolute values, right? So here's the deal. If you want the error for the fourth degree term, right? So when we go to do c, right? Anytime we want to find error in one of these situations, we're using the term after that term, right? So we use the first four terms. So if you recall the way our series worked, right? The a sub nth term was negative 1 to the n plus 1 x to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n times n. See, I told you I shouldn't stop right. I just keep erasing it, and then I have to write it again. It's crazy. So if I'm using p sub 4, right, so if we want the error when we do p sub 4 of 2 minus f of 2, right, so this is this is our approximation using the first four terms, the, the term up to x to the fourth, right, um, this is the actual, 
right? So that's that's called error, right? The trick is that I want to use the x to the fifth term. So p sub 4 uses up to x to the fourth term, right? Well, the trick here, and I think the place a lot of people are going to make a mistake on this problem, is they're going to try plugging in a sub, they're going to try and use the fourth term, meaning a sub 4. You don't want the fourth term because notice that my exponent on x is actually n plus 1. So this is actually using the terms up to when n is 3 because I, so what I want to do is say that this quantity is less than what would happen if I max out uh, the term I'd get when I use n is 4, right? Because that would be my x to the fifth term. So that would be a negative 1 to the fifth, right? x to the fifth, did I do a crazy thing? Yep, x to the fifth, my bad. Uh, over 4 times uh, 3 to the 4th, or 3 to the 4th times 4. I want to max this thing out. Well, I want to max it out on the window between where I'm centered, which is 0, and the actual value they gave me, which is 2. So to wait, in order to max that out, the negative 1's not going to matter because I'm inside an absolute value, so I'm going to end up using a 2 to the 5th over 4 times 3 to the 4th, and then I'm going to clean this up, right? They asked me to show that, uh, they asked me to show what the largest possible error is, and it's going to be this number. So, I'm going to get that this is a 32 over a 4 times 81, which is an 8 over 81. So that's the boundary for the error. It has to be smaller than what would happen if I max out the next term. So again, the trick here is that I have to use the fifth degree term, but that's not a sub 5, and I think that's where a lot of people are going to get lost on that. right? So I used up to the fourth degree term, which means the fifth degree term is the one I'm maxing out.